Thank you for ruining that shot, Luna. Thank you. Miss Alone, what's going on? I get wiggly. Free! You're free. Free to run another day or nap. They mostly just nap. Anyways, I digress. What I want to talk about in this video today is a certain book series that I have read recently. And it will be this one. The Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. So I read the first one and I liked it. I thought it was flip flap finger fact fabulous a do. And then I was like, well, let's go to the library and see if they have more. And they did. They had the sequel, Crown of Midnight, which I read in like two days. And then I had to go and get the third one. Well, I was lucky that it happened to be in at the same time. So I got to read the third one. And why is there a fourth book? I wanted it to end in this book. But it doesn't. Why does this keep happening to me? I just want a story that I can read in its entirety and be happy and content that it has ended. Is that too much to ask? Is that? Luna, is that too much to ask? Luna? Luna, I need an answer. Don't knock my camera over, cat. Don't you don't you knock it over. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. No, no, no. This is why we can't have nice things, Luna. This is why. Cats. Can't live with them. Can't live without them. You just deal with them. Yeah. Yeah, why are you biting me? But yeah, so I finished this series in like two weeks. And well, I took Thanksgiving off because I was busy doing stuff and hanging out with people. And so I took a week off between this book and these two books. But yes. So this is the part of the video where I say go away if you haven't read them yet. Because I'm going to talk about them in depth. No, it's not going to be in depth. But it's going to be spoilery, probably. Yes, it will be spoilery. So leave why are you still here just go just you're not wanted anymore just go just go just leave I said good day go are you gone okay so the people who read all three of these books oh look at the colors those are actually kind of pretty I like the colors and the theme it's all like fiery crown of midnight yeah throne of glass she's all like mm, bad serious assassin and air of fire it should be red this should be red. I don't know why it's green. Because I mean, her power is fire. So, that. You should work on that. Yeah. So, I love the first book and the whole. You don't really know much about Selena. Selena? I think that's how you say her name. Selena? Selena. We'll go, we're going with Selena. We don't know much about Selena, and we're just introduced her right away as a slave who's being taken out of the salt mines of Indovier and being dragged by this guard who's apparently his name is Kale now, the captain of the guard, but I thought his name was Chill, but I was wrong. So his name's Kale. Someone said they thought it was Cole. I could see Cole. I don't really see Kale. I just, I just, I just imagine him as a big leafy green vegetable running around. Kale. That's what I, that's what I picture. I just can't take him seriously anymore. I just can't. I can't take you seriously, Kale. I just want to put you in a salad, and then I'll put you in my mouth and eat you. Is that wrong? Is that so wrong? Yeah, that's kind of wrong. Shouldn't eat people. Okay. Even if their name is a vegetable, we shouldn't eat them. Overall, I enjoyed this story immensely. It was gripping and full of heartbreaking adventure and decisions and terrible evil kings duh and kick butt female assassin power I felt the characters I was like no don't go there when Nehemia like sacrifices herself so Selena can overcome herself and be who she was born to be oh it's so sad and then and then kale he's like detained by the rebellion people and then she has to go save him but it was all a setup and then nahemia was dead and she was like Ugh. and then kale and 
Selena are just over. It's just clean cut, done. She tried to kill him, so it's kind of, you can't really go back from there. You can't. That's like crossing a line. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I was kind of disappointed in that moment because I was like, but, but, but I wanted Kale and Selena to be together forever and happily ever after. But I just didn't know. No. I mean, I didn't think it was really fair of Selena to blame Kale for not telling her that there was a death threat on Nehemia because it wasn't his fault. He was confused. He works for the king. It's not... I mean, he loves her, but still, she's supposedly the enemy. Why are you chewing on the Christmas tree now, cat? Yeah, that was kind of the pivotal point in the novel where everything just goes downhill from there. I guess I'm not talking about this novel as much. This one was really good, though. It's just kind of an introductory novel, so there's really not much to say about it. I mean, it's all about how she becomes the king's assassin. I had no idea Selena was going to be the the princess, I guess, so the queen alien, and I didn't even realize that she was Fey. And this is like it did a really good job of disguising that fact in this book. The romance between Prince Dorian and Selena, it was like, mm, I don't know about that. That was kind of unnecessary, but yeah, it, it happened. So we ju we'll just forget about it. Prince Dorian, I like Prince Dorian. He's kind of a cool guy, and he kind of like gets ragged on a little bit for being kind of wimpy in a way. But I mean, if you had a father like his, it would be a tough life. He's kind of mean. King Ardalyn's kind of mean, just to put it lightly. He's mean. I don't understand characters who are that bad. Like, how can you have not one ounce of humanity left in your soul that is a redeeming quality about you? Why are you so evil. I don't understand. There's like, I don't know. I think there needs to be more explanation and backstory surrounding King Ardalyn and why he's become so corrupt and so evil. Maybe it's because of the magic that he has tried to harness these word keys. Maybe it has influenced his mind and his soul so it's become as black as the actions he takes on his kingdom. But I don't know. It's just, I don't understand how those characters exist. And they're rampant in the world of YA literature. There's always this evil, quintessential bad guy. And I just want to understand them. Which brings me to an interesting point, plot point, in the third book, Air of Fire. When they go back and forth between the three different storylines. So the first storyline is Kale and, how do you say his name, Adian? We'll say Adian. Kale and Adian, um, Adian is Selena's, Alina, Aline's cousin. So he's Fey, half Fey, Demi Fey, he's Demi Fey. Um, and they kind of form this like truce because he's the rebellion guy. And then Prince Dorian is also, I consider them kind of the same storyline because he's there, they're all in the castle. And then he has this romance with Sorka, who is a healer in the castle. And oh my god, this ending! I just want to throw the book. Why? You didn't have to kill her. It was, their romance was just getting started. But maybe, maybe it was needed to spearhead Dorian into rebelling against his father once and for all and not taking his crap anymore. Maybe it was needed. I'm not sure. But yeah, I don't know. I was just, I felt bad for Prince Dorian and Sorka. Well, obviously, because she died. But yeah, it was sad. And I wanted to, like, I wanted more story after the book. Because I'm like, you can't end on that note. You can't end on it. But she did. But it happened, so whatever. We're, we'll just move on. We're moving on. And then their storyline, I considered one. And then we have Selena and Rowan. And Rowan is her guide, her teacher, who is Queen Maeve's blood oath person. I don't really know what they're called. But he was in her circle of fey warriors who had pledged themselves for all eternity to serve Queen Maeve, who is the relative of Selena Elaine. She's not a nice character. She's not very likable. She mean, controlling, you know. She wants power. Who doesn't in this novel? Who doesn't? Well, except all the, the good main characters. They don't. They want a little power. Selena's a bit 
egotistical. She's a bit narcissistic, but we still like her. She's had a hard life. We'll let it slide. Just this once for Selena, because, you know, seeing your parents killed and going through all the horrible heartache she's gone through, having to be a slave for a year, seeing her best friend die, blaming the love of her life for it, and mmm, god, that girl, she had some issues and she, she definitely dealt with them in this novel. Yeah, she, she had a hard time, so her and Rowan were dealing with their mutual similar issues in this novel and it was kind of confusing about the romance line I'm not really sure where the romance line is going or who Selena will end up with in the next book it's it's rather confusing I'm just I'm, I'm confused but I guess that's okay because I'm not like rooting for any couple to happen I just kind of want them to overthrow the king and down with the king the evil king he sucks Let's just get rid of him. Can we fight him already? Can we fight him? Because he's annoying. I, I don't want him around anymore. I don't want him to be the ruler of any kingdom, even if it's fictional. But yeah, we have their storyline. And then we have a weird storyline with these different groups of witches training with weaver... Ver, I can't say it. Those, those creatures who fly. Wervens? We Wervins. We're calling them Wervins. And the main character in that is a witch named Manon. And I'm, I don't know where that storyline is going or that, that plot point. It, I'm sure it will make a lot more sense in the next book. But in this book, I was kind of like, really? What is happening? I don't know this character. And she's just being introduced suddenly in this book. And do we like her? Do we not like her? I mean, she's kind of evil. She kind of kills people. And she kind of has like a black heart. But she also has some redeeming qualities. And her connection with her Wervin. And the fact that she realizes a little bit that her grandmother is kind of controlling. And kind of making her more evil than she actually is. Maybe, maybe she's a good person on the inside. We don't know. We'll see where that storyline develops. I feel like maybe some sort of like alliance is gonna happen between Manon and Selena because they're kind of like dark on the inside a little bit they have a little bit of darkness but they're also there's a seed of goodness in both of them there's a light that will not go out well in Selena specifically that was reiterated a little bit over and over again especially because of her firepower you know just it just kind of made sense her ember sparked and then it went out a few times but then it lit up again and is going strong the moment when she was fighting those blogs and then she went to the darkest moment in her life and then she accepted herself for who she is and she reached out to Elaine and they became one and then her magic was hers to use fully and she just burned those guys to the ground and Showed them the light. Thank you for this awesome kick butt moment. I appreciated it very much. And now we are left with our main characters kind of in unfortunate situations for Prince Dorian at least because now he's being literally controlled by his father because he got the word key collar put on him. And Kale is exiled pretty much and running. I don't know where he's going exactly, but he's probably gonna find Selena. And now Adian is in the dungeon, and we don't know if he'll ever be reunited with Aileen or not. I want them to be reunited because I think that'll be a very interesting relationship to see how they interact, let's say. But I don't know how the, like, Selena and Rowan thing is. I don't get it, but they're like friends, but more than friends, but not more than friends. It's confusing. They're, like, bound by Blood Oath. So he's her protector, warrior, part of her court now, but where does that leave her with all the other characters? I don't really know. I kind of like their bond, their friendship developing over time. It was really, it was really nice. They needed each other, and I really liked that development of their characters and how they became more open with each other and accepting of what happened in their past and just letting it all go. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. Just like Elsa, just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Just let it go. Did you? Did you? 
Do you let it go? Okay. Thanks for listening to me rant a little bit about this book series because I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to my crap. My rabble. My ribble rabble. Rabble raza raza raza. My whatever this was. Use Mr. Chester. Hi, Chester. Oh. Okay. Say bye. Bye, everyone. Do you guys like my scarf? It's my awful pop scarf. I'm afraid of ghosts and sheets with holes in them. One time, I saw a bird. I'm a Hufflepuff.